video, we're going to look at how we set up a new job. The term job in the CAM process refers to any unique setup on the machine. Any time a part is flipped on the machine to machine a different side, you're going to need to create a new job in your CAM system to establish the new part orientation. If you plan on following along, as we set up the job, open part 4.1 and save a copy of it in your working directory. I will note that even though we do need to move clamps throughout the process of machining this part, it can all be machined from one orientation or one setup. So we are only going to need one job for this particular example. With that said, Let's begin. On the CAM tab of the Command Manager, select the Job icon. Jobs define the type of machining we're doing, the stock we're going to use to create the part, as well as the working coordinate system for the part. Let's take a moment to look at each. For this part, we are creating a milled part so we can leave the type as milling. Setting the stock up allows us to simulate our toolpaths and see how the material is going to be removed. The default option is automatic. When using the automatic setting, the model is analyzed and a cuboid is then created slightly larger than the part using the given offset dimensions. When we're looking at these various offset values, keep in mind the cutting tool moves along the z-axis, and the machine table moves along the x and y-axis. So, the values for the x-offset and y-offset control the length and width of the part, while the values for the z-offset control the thickness of the part. For both the x and y directions, we're going to leave it at 40 thou. This will apply 40 thousandths of an inch to each side of the part, making the part 80 thousandths of an inch larger in both the x and y directions because again that 40 thousandths of an inch is applied to each side of the part. Because we're machining this part from plate stock, in the case of the z direction, we're going to use a zero offset. The drawback to using a zero offset is the top surface of the part and the stock are on top of each other so things appear a little funny in the graphic display. So sometimes you may end up using a Z offset of one thousandths of an inch just to improve the graphical display while you're programming your part. With our stock set up, we're going to skip over the model and fixture sections because they're used for more complex setups when we want to ensure that our tooling does not collide with the work holding devices. Instead, we can next focus on the working coordinate system, or WCS. The WCS is often referred to as the part datum. All of the code for this job will reference back to the working coordinate system as its point of reference, just like our SolidWorks models reference back to an origin. The WCS is displayed in the graphics area with a red, green, and blue arrow. The red arrow indicates the plus X direction, the green arrow indicates the plus Y direction, and the blue arrow indicates the plus Z direction. We want the blue arrow to be pointing at the spindle of the machine, or pointing towards the direction that the tool is coming from. A good way to remember the colors is RGB is XYZ. Or you can look down at the SolidWorks triad where each of the colors is appropriately labeled. Now, the simplest way to set the origin is to use the stock and orientation method. With this method, we will define an orientation for the part by selecting a plane or planar face, and then the location of the working coordinate system by relating it to the stock. If the blue arrow is not pointed upwards right now, 
we would select the orientation box and then select a face that the spindle is normal or perpendicular to. In this case, that would be the top plane. In our case, Z is already pointing in the correct direction, so we can now set up the working coordinate system origin by selecting the drop down. Remember, any selection we're making is relative to the stock, not the finished part, but the top side, top corner, or center of the stock. Not the finished part, but the stock that we previously defined. For this example, our origin is going to be bottom corner 3. Incidentally, the bottom corner is a common location for the datum any time you're clamping a part down to a fixture plate, as we are in this example. Well, with the stock and the coordinate system set, we can now select the green check mark to accept our settings. On the CAM feature tree, our job has been added. For every part we machine, whether that part has one job or multiple jobs, we do need to create a job to set up the stock and the working coordinate system. So at this point, I hope that you have a fundamental understanding of how that's handled. In the next videos, we're going to look at how we define the stock and the working coordinate system in more detail.